In Genesis 1, 3 it says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. But that was just the beginning of the divine creation of the universe. This, according to the Bible, is what God later did with that light, and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years, and let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And so it was. And God made the two great lights, the greater light for dominion of the day, and the lesser light for dominion of the night, he also made the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and to dominate in the day and at night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Robert Gross attest his mind was full of rainbows and light rays. In the 13th century, an English scholar of the Franciscan order thought about the subject. Robert Grosseteste worked in one of the great centers of learning in Oxford, which people had begun to call university. For Grosseteste, whose mind was full of rainbows and rays of light, everything, even the primordial divine act of creation itself, had to do with light. However, how exactly did God do it? The response of the religious is truly exceptional. His theory was the first attempt to describe the heavens and the earth using a set of laws. From his point of view, everything had begun with light and matter bursting out from the center, a medieval Big Bang. His story is one of daring invention and imagination, of how faith in mathematical and scientific principles combined with belief in a God-ordained cosmos gave rise to a surprisingly prophetic idea. It starts with the light. The light, always present and always divine, but what is it? But what is light? That question has never been simple. Some early Christian writers thought that there were two distinct types of light. The lux, as it was called in Latin, was what God used to make the cosmos, a kind of divine creative force, almost a manifestation of God himself. The other was lumen, the ordinary light emanating from the heavenly bodies and allowing us to see things. That vision of enlightenment is evident to anyone who has been in a Gothic cathedral flooded with light coming through the windows of windows. Priests and theologians thought to contemplate the beautiful lumen in the church, the faithful would be attracted to the lux blessed of God. Religion and science an archangel revealing the physical nature of the universe to a group of philosophers and mathematicians image an archangel revealing the physical nature of the universe to a group of philosophers and mathematicians, including Robert Grosseteste, as well as Francis Bacon, Icolaus Copericus, Galileo Galilei, Isaac Newton, Thales, René Descartes and Archimedes. Engraved by James Barry, 1795. Although there seems to be a conflict between science and religion today, for a good part of history religion was a great motivation to want to know more about the world. In the schools of the 11th and 12th century cathedrals predecessors of the universities some scholars thought that it was their duty to learn more about the universe which, for them, had created Dios. They not only consulted the Bible, they read the writings of the ancient Greeks like Plato, Aristotle and Hippocrates, which had been preserved in translations made by Islamic writers. Learning about the natural world flourished in the age of the great Gothic cathedrals, and many historians speak of a first renaissance in the 12th century. The most beautiful of the entities gross attest was born circa 1175 in Suffolk, England and died in 1253. Robert Grosseteste was born in the middle of this exciting time. In the early 13th century he was a prominent scholar, and, like all researchers at Oxford, a devout Christian. In 1235 he became the Bishop of Lincoln. For him, light was one of the most wonderful creations of God. The physical light is the best, the most delightful, the most beautiful of Todd at S entities exist. 
the light is what constitutes perfection and beauty of all physical forms, he wrote. But Grossetest could not wait to sit down and enjoy the light through the large windows of Lincoln's Gothic Cathedral. He began to study it as a scientist. He analyzed, for example, the passage of light through a glass of water. He realized that lenses can magnify objects, and when one reads what he wrote about it he wonders why another 300 years passed before telescopes and microscopes were invented. This part of the optics, when understood well, shows us how we can make things that are a very distant distance seem as if they are very close, and the large things that are nearby seem very small, and how can we make them small things that are far away look like any size we want, so that it might be possible for us to read the smallest letters at incredible distances or count the sand or seeds or any kind of tiny objects. Telescopes would take three centuries to arrive. He also noticed that light bends when passing from air to glass or water, an effect called refraction. Like others before him, he saw that the light could be divided into a rainbow-colored spectrum, and he wrote a treatise on the rainbows in which he came close to explaining how they formed. He thought the clouds acted as a giant lens that refracted the light and the return of colors. Loose in 1225, Grossetest gathered what he had learned from light in a book he simply called De Luce, On Light. It was a mixture of theology, science, metaphysics, and cosmic speculation. But he was dealing in particular with the question of how God made the whole cosmos using light. Instead of seeing creation as a sort of act of magic, Grossetest began to transform it into something more like a natural process, something we would now call scientific study. Stained glass of century 19 with the figure of Robert Grossetest image copyright Creative Commons image caption not content to enjoy the light coming through the windows and color filled the cathedral. Like many of his contemporaries, he believed that God worked with simple principles based on rules that humanity could understand using logic, geometry, and mathematics. T. He notes the causes of natural effects must be expressed by means of lines, angles and figures, because otherwise it would be impossible to have knowledge of the reason for these effects, he wrote. And, as the universe was governed by mathematics, it was orderly, rational, and its rules could be deduced. In fact, Grossetest's description of the divine creation recorded in Delucky is so precise that it can be expressed with a mathematical model, something that historians and scientists of the British University of Durham did with the help of a computer. The world machine in its time, Earth was still the center of the universe, and each planet was moved by spheres. For Grossetest and his contemporaries, the universe consisted of the Earth, the center, and all the celestial bodies the Sun, the Moon, the seven known planets, and the stars revolving around them in perfect circles. But for him it all began with a kind of Big Bang in which an explosion of light of the Lux type caused a dense ball of matter to expand, becoming increasingly light and diluted. This expansion disperses matter into a sphere the size of the world's machine, which is how it names the cosmos, one of the physicists at the University of Durham, who translates cosmological theory of Grossetest in a mathematical model. But then he finds a problem, he cannot expand infinitely, because at that time the universe was huge but finite how to stop it. With a brilliant scientific idea thought like a physicist, he resorts to something simple to explain not only how he stops expand but how the spheres are formed. A bright light in the dark if you cannot get to the void, because nature abhors it, he said, there has to be a minimum density, and when you reach it, you have to crystallize. Following that line of thought, that would happen first in the most distant part, the firmament. This is crystallized first and is perfected, acquiring light lumen, which also pushes mass, in this case inward, and thus are created the spheres in which the planets, the sun, the moon and the earth reside. 
portrait of Robert Grosseteste, Bishop of Lincoln, made in the 13th century, giving the blessing with the right hand. The other modern thought he had was that when we look at the sky, the universe we see somehow contains the imprint or echo of the processes that formed it, says MacLeish. That is precisely what cosmologists think today remember the microwave search with the echo of the Big Bang. He adds enthusiastically. They see for the first time the tracks that the Big Bang left in space the only obscurity of the Dark Ages, between the fall of Rome and the Renaissance, is our ignorance of that time. Grosseteste is a profoundly impressive thinker, says MacLeish. The story they told me when I was young was that before 1600 there was nothing more than mysticism, theology, dogmatism, etc. And suddenly Galileo appeared, Kepler, well. Everything is light and enlightenment, and science, says the physicist. But the truth is that science does not work that way we all take small steps and, as Isaac Newton put it, we all climbed on the shoulders of giants and Grosseteste is one of those giants on whose shoulders the first modern scientists rose.